guys, we're back for another exciting episode of the Hashtag Wednesday Match Play, and I am pumped for today's guest because this guy's got a lot of stuff going on. Um, I don't want to call him like a like a, a ground mover or a, a, a like a, what do you, I don't even know what you, like a shifter, shaper, shaper, that's the word I was looking for. And we've actually had, and we'll get to this in a little bit, we've had a guy that does kind of what he does on the show earlier this season. But this guy is all about building, designing, and laying out golf courses. And we've got a lot of fun things to talk about. And I, and I, before we went live, I said this is a half an hour show. When was the last time somebody looked this up? The last time we actually got within a half an hour? Because I don't think that's ever happened. And I need to like put a timer somewhere on here so I can, when we get to, get to 25 minutes, that I, I, I start the back nine. But tonight we've got Keith Red with us. And, and he does a lot of work with Core Crenshaw, which we'll talk about. But he's also got his own design company. So we're going to dig into the details, talk a little bit about what he does, how he does it, how he got into it. He's young too. So he's had his hand on some really impressive golf courses. Uh, he's got one behind him that we're going to talk about, Cabot Cliffs, and just a lot of really fun stuff to talk about tonight. This episode of the Hashtag Wednesday Mash Play, as always, is presented by Eat Sleep Golf. If you haven't done so, click the subscribe button down below on YouTube. If you don't want to watch us, you can listen to us on iTunes and Google Play. Really easy. Just subscribe to the podcast. But make sure on any of these, turn on the notifications because I don't want you to miss it. It comes out every Wednesday, 10 a.m. Our goal is to always get this in as many hands as possible. So whatever you're doing, if you're watching, if you're listening, subscribe so you get all the episodes. If you haven't had the chance, leave a review. Love to hear your feedback, good, bad, or indifferent. But let's talk about golf course design. So first off, give us an overview of who you are, what you do, and what you actually do. Because like I said, it's it's a very interesting career choice. And Something that we as golfers take, you know, take for granted. So, welcome to the hashtag Wednesday Match Play. Hey, thanks, Ricky. It's uh, glad to, glad to be on, and um, yeah, a little bit of kind of my background. Um, really, was never into golf when I first, you know, started in this industry. Never thought this would be the path of my career. Um, out of a whim, got started in a, a landscape architect. Well, not landscape architect, but landscapes unlimited in Lincoln, Nebraska, as a golf construction company so I just went and interviewed with them and got hired on the spot with them and just you know kind of start out with the basics things of like raking shoveling and doing the doing the stuff from the start and then over time got more opportunities to get on equipment and then that kind of led to the next thing and a lot of people during that time that gave me a lot of opportunities and chances to to get out there and do some neat stuff and then uh, got hooked up with uh, Cora Crenshaw when Landscapes was running the project or, or was the contractor building it, and Cora Crenshaw was the designer. So that was the first time I met Cora Crenshaw and the guys that worked for the team and um, kind of hit it off with those guys. And, you know, they really kind of took me under their wing. And then later on, then I got a call to, to work for them and moved out to Claremont, Florida, and um, kind of was my official first start with Cora Crenshaw. So, yeah, really at the beginning, golf wasn't wasn't really a plan of mine. And and now that I'm into it, I just absolutely love it. And the people that I meet in this industry and 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 the people that have taught me so much is, you know, the reason that, you know, I'm talking with you today, you know, and and it's it's been a very fun journey. So that's really cool. Well, and you like I said, you're young and, and before we went live, we were also discussing uh, electronic dance music, which I think is gonna keep our relationship a little bit uh followed you on Twitter. So like let's make sure we stay there and talk more about Deep House. So yeah. but tonight we're not talking about dance music, we're talking about what you do with golf courses. So as a course shaper and designer, what's that process look like from start to finish? Like do you literally go from, hey, I have an idea, build a golf course here, or are you coming in after that the design has already been done? Kind of What's the journey look like for you on a, on a normal project? Yeah, so with Bill and Ben, um, when I'm working for them, um, and I still, you know, I just love working for Bill and Ben. They're some of the best people to work with. And so Bill and Ben will have the routing for us, you know, and have the land. They'll study the land and, and get the best out of that piece of property with, you know, make it, you know, trying to find projects where the, they actually search the golf holes out rather than imposing them on the land. So really you'd have, when we first go start as a shaper, we might have like a, like a pole where the tees might be and maybe where the turn pole is and, and where the green might be. And then, you know, Bill will come out there with us and kind of discuss what he's looking at and what he wants and then kind of turns us loose and, and lets us be creative and then kind of comes back and edits it through. So it's a, it's a lot of fun working for them because they don't really put you in a box. They don't 
set, you know, hand you a set of exact plans and then try to hit these numbers and try to put it exactly what it is. They, they really give us a lot of creative freedom and then they kind of go in, and they're like the editor. So that, that's, that's a lot of fun and, and I enjoy that. So. So then they're okay with you having your own, your own kind of company on the side. Like it's not a conflict of interest or do they, are they aware of that? Or are you able to work with not only them? Could you go work? Like if Tiger calls and says, Hey, come shape this golf course for me in Dubai. Like, is that kind of how it works too? What's yeah, that's, that's what's so neat about Bill and Ben is the opportunity that, that they let us, you know, do our stuff on our own too. And they're not, they said, Hey, you will, you always got a spot with us, you know? So like when winter park came across the radar, I mean, that was the first job where I was my solo, you know, design with, with Riley Johns. And, you know, I was nervous at that point. I, you know, I was kind of like, you know, tell Bill, you know, I'm, I'm gonna probably go do this for a little while. And I was, you know, and he's like, Keith, this is, this is exactly what we want you to do. You know, we want you to take what you've learned from us and, and take it to the, you know, the next step, you know, and, and they want us to be out there doing that. And, you know, and if we succeed, they, they, they see that as a compliment to them. And, and they're so for us doing that. And that's, that's that's what's made that so much easier on doing that when projects come up and they're like you always got a spot with us so that's that's really neat and so that's that's just the working relationship that you know bill and ben give us and it's really really cool you know cool you're on a first name relationship with these guys you're like yeah bill and ben yeah like this guy yeah i mean that's just fun well yeah i mean it's it's been cool that you know i've almost worked for them for uh, almost like 12 years now so so i've um you know, and the projects that I've worked on have taken me all over the world. So it's been, it's been a, it's been a fun ride with them. And, you know, I'm right now I'm, um, we had a few projects that were kind of on hold, so they didn't happen in the time frame. So like right now I'm helping Mike Nuzo and Don Mahaffey at, out at nine grand and in, in Cleveland, um, Texas, outside of Houston on a project. So, when projects come up too, it's like then and there's not anything for them going on, then I'll go help out another friend. So, yeah. So that's a good segue to this next question. So I think that what we need to do is we need to get those two guys on this show before this season is over. And we're running out of dates because we've only got a few few episodes left in this season. It's crazy how fast this year is going. But we've had another guy from Court Crenshaw. I think you might know this guy. Trevor, have you met him? And have you worked with him on some yeah, projects? I know. I'm, I'm really good friends with Trevor. So... Awesome. Kind of the story that goes back with Trev is that second year that we were at Cabot when I was running the project, we were looking for guys to come help that second year to just take the take the job over the finish line. So I called up Riley Johns and then I called up Trevor Dormer and I called them up separate and then not realizing that they knew each other and they're friends and they're like, yeah, we'll get in the truck and we'll drive there. So once those guys got there, man, it was it was just so much fun to work with them and um, it's what made that project uh, happen and, and the way that we were able to finish it and the quality and everything for those guys to come out. They're just great guys and fun guys to work with. And then Trev and I went to Japan um, with Core Crenshaw and worked out there in Yokohama, Japan for like a year and a half too. So um, yeah, friends. Yeah, that was really cool. Well, it was funny because he doesn't know that you're gonna be on this show, right? So I hope he's watching. And we were tweeting not long ago about craft beer too. So I, it's just a fun, fun. You talk about the golf business and the golf business is so small, right? And just a couple of weeks ago when I'm watching the PGA, uh, PGA Championship, John Easterbrook used to work in the Troon corporate office when I did. We became good friends. Worked with him for three years. Kepka's holding the trophy and there's John right behind him because John now works for the PGA of America. And I'm like, hey, I know that guy. Like, it's just, it's funny how small this business is. And definitely a small business, a tight knit group. And I mean, just some of the greatest people you meet. And it's, uh, it's really cool. It's, it's what, what keeps me in the industry. And, and I love it. So. so you mentioned Japan. You've worked on some pretty awesome projects over the years. What's been some of the most memorable projects that you've worked on? Um, you know, Lost Farm was amazing. Barn Bogle Lost Farm in Tasmania. Um, I was working with Dave Axelin. It was just him and I, two Americans out there building the whole course. And it was just so laid back. I mean, well, it was just the mentality of everyone there, too. It was just laid back mentality of um, everyone in Australia. And working for Richard Sattler and the whole family there. And amazing piece of property. And it, it was cool because we'd hired locals to teach them how to 
shape and kind of finish stuff and 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 they they have pride and i think some of the guys are still there working on the golf course this day after we built it so that's that's what's fun when you can leave jobs when you finish the project for people that would normally have to travel to maybe the mainland to get work and now they can work at their own next door so that's what's that's what's rewarding so building a course and shaping a course is obviously there's a lot of steps involved. You said you were in Japan for a year and a half. I mean, it's obviously not something that just happens overnight. I mean, my goodness, we close for two weeks at a time here in Naples just yeah. to airify. I mean, and then it's not even ready typically when we reopen. And our gold course is actually closed right now for a few weeks. We're doing a bunker renovation, uh, the Hurricane Irma that we had last year. So lots of, lots of work to be done, obviously. But when you're building a course, there's a lot of steps to the process. What's your favorite step in the process from – from day one through the completion of the project? Uh, my favorite is the finish work, is um, dragging off a fairway and getting it right right before you plant the grass, just the way it looks and everything's tied in. And that's probably the that my favorite part, is just one that doesn't have any grass on it right there, but it's ready to plant like the next day, and you can kind of look at everything. And, and then it's me coming back. But yeah, the finish work is what I really like. It's just that last... You know, all the work that you've done, if you don't really get that last stage and the last details right, then it, it shows. But if you take a little extra time and put that handcrafted touch to it, it, it does show up. So That's awesome. I couldn't even imagine. Like, I've, I've not even seen that before, like right before grass. And that'd be neat. To, that'd be a neat thing to, to see and to, to be a part of. Because, I mean, grass doesn't take long to grow. I mean, we, we go through that, obviously, with just, you know, annual maintenance and stuff. And we remastered our black course last year. And. We did not do fairways, though, so I didn't get the chance to see that. We did tee boxes and greens and bunkers, but that would be a cool, especially a course that's never been played before, just to, to see it all come come to fruition. Now, when you're designing a course and working on a course like that, is there technology involved with the topography, or are you just sitting down with a piece of paper and drawing it out with, with a pen and paper? Um, well, it just really depends. Like with Bill and Ben, it's really it's to build it on site. You know, I mean, he, he'll have a routing drawn and stuff like that. Um, you know, for when Riley and I did Winter Park, we put together a whole master plan for them showing like a concept and and then had grades and everything for them just because that's what the city required to have. And so we put all that paperwork in. But I mean, a lot of times those plans just get set behind the door of the office or something like that. You know, it, it doesn't really get get used, but um, sometimes it just people need that visual thing to see like, and it also gives us ability to get quantities and things like that to get our numbers for budgeting. But, um, you know, one cool thing that we're doing, so Riley and I uh, are working at Rolling Green um, doing the restoration there. And right now we're in the research stage. So we, we're using technology, we're using LIDAR, and we're using CAD and everything. We're actually got the old aerials from like 19, 1928, and then we're tracing all the different plans and then overlaying all those. And now we can actually take, because the LIDAR has given us actual pinpoints on the ground, so it's truth to the earth. So we can walk out there with a GPS unit and actually put flags in the green where the old bunkers were and things like that. So it's it's a way of using technology to actually strip back some of the you know things that have happened over the years of just different people kind of, you know, they, they had their right minded you know they want to do something right but sometimes it doesn't always work out and and at rolling green they want to go back to the most true flynn course that they possibly can get to so that's it's really neat to work with them that is cool now a lot of heavy machinery is required to do a new construction or a remodel remastering is it hard to find equipment especially in other countries or is that just something that's readily available for you guys uh -huh. No, yeah, it's 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 not too difficult to find equipment. Um, yeah, in Tasmania, we had great equipment out there. I mean, yeah, no, it's you got a lot of rental people. You actually have a lot of people showing up every time we got a project starting. Like every rental company comes out and stops in and tries to bring you some hats and try to get you to to rent their equipment. So they're always pushing it on you. So. Um, Thanks for the hat, but I have a trailer. Or yeah, 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 we already have two dozers, and, and <laughs> I would have called you before, but we've already got the equipment here. So, 
Now, is there a lot of competition? I mean, I talk about Tiger and Jack and, you know, all these different companies. Are they are they competing? Or is there an RFP for a new course? What I mean, what's what's the process? I mean, how do they pick a core crunch all over, you know, a Gil Hands? I think it's just, uh, I think, well, I don't really know how. It, I mean, it's just basically a lot of times it's just they've seen the work before and they just call them up and say, hey, you know, are you interested in this? And you know, Bill and Ben aren't interested in city jobs. You know, they don't want to be the RFPs and things like that. They'd rather work with like one owner and um, it just kind of simplifies things. Um, you know, that was like funny one thing that Bill always said when we first were going for Winter Park. He's like, are you sure you want your first job to be, you know, a city job? And, you know, it, it's very difficult. And I was like, Bill, it's not, it hasn't been difficult at all working with these guys and everything like that. And I think that's very rare, but it's a reason why Winter Park turned out the way it did because the city was very willing to look outside the box and give, you know, guys that didn't have a list of their own projects but had built great golf, but it you know, gave them an opportunity to show what they could do on their, their piece of property. So. so if you've ever played a Pete Dye course, you've seen railroad ties everywhere. You've played yeah. a Jack Nicholas course, every green is tiny and it does this with the false fronts. I just played one a few weeks ago and it was a lot of that. I may or may not have had a couple of three putts. Anything that Core Crenshaw does that's very unique that is included in every single one of their projects like that? Um, I think you're going to see a lot of opportunity to run the ball into greens. They, they, they like to at least give you an opportunity to like not completely cut you off from the green in some, some aspects. So they're really about the ground game and actually putting certain contours that if you actually use, utilize them, they'll actually reward you. So if you're just trying to play right to the flag, you'll probably get in trouble. But if you hit like 10 yards to the left and use that mound to feed it in, then, you know, it's kind of those little things where they, they want to make you think about what you're doing and not just letting the golf course get you into the program of driver wedge every time you're, you're hitting. So I think that. that's probably, you know, there's so many things you could go on, but that, that's kind of the main thing. They, they really want you to, you know, to use every every club in your bag and really have fun and, and enjoy it and, and want to go back and play it again. So Now, you got it right above you there, Cabot Cliffs. Um, yeah. Obviously, Scott Stevens from Eat Sleep Golf, being yeah. a Canadian, was going to point out a Canadian golf course, the number one course in Canada. What was that project like, and was it rewarding working on a project that's got, you know, such high accolades as a facility? Yeah, it was – it was uh, I'll just be honest. It was, it was a difficult project that, that, um, the, the weather, um, there was so many different things, you know, how it turned out. I don't think people realize that how much work actually went into like getting that course put into place. I mean, there were some holes like one, like holes number one, 10 and 11 and 18. Some of those holes are just flat holes and, you know, um, Rod Whitman went out there and just spent like three months just pushing stuff around to try to make something look like golf, you know, and, you know, the, even like the second hole, um, it's, that took a lot of work. That was actually more work than a lot of other holes that, and people will think that, oh man, that was just laying there. You guys just stripped back the marum and the beach grass and planted it, you know, and I think, uh, one thing too, is like, I think I'm letting a secret out here, but it's, uh, on the hole number six, everyone says like that hole was shaped in a week or like two days. It was just stripped there. It's like, no, it took me like three, three and a half weeks of pushing to try to make that work to get that hole to look where it is now. You know, it's, everyone thinks that it's really easy, but there's a lot of work that went into it. And there's a lot of guys that put a lot of time and, and late nights. And I, mean, I think one night I was out there on the sand pro trying to grade fairways to get ready to plant the next day in the dark. <laughs> with a headlamp on and the lights on the sand pro trying to finish the golf course, you know, and get stuff done. So, but no, it was very rewarding to know that, you know, it's created jobs for the people up there in Inverness and turned that whole community around. And um, just nice knowing that a lot of people that were locals there that work there now still work at the golf course and they don't have to go to the oil fields and things like that to work. They can stay home. So, um, really yeah, cool. very, very rewarding project. Um, but yeah, at the same point, it was, not easy like 
you know, the 16th hole out there, the par three that plays out to the side of the cliff out there. I mean, when we were first building that shape and that, Bill never thought that there was any way that I'd get that green so far out there hanging over the ocean. And it was certain death on every corner on the back front. I mean, you could put a dozer right off the cliff. You, you didn't know if the cliff was going to collapse and go into the ocean. So, but it didn't. Morning, so, probably very difficult at the same time. <laughs> So before we jump into the back nine, any uh, any current projects you're working on, or anything coming up that you haven't uh, you haven't even gotten boots on the ground yet? Um, I got something that's overseas um, that's starting hopefully in December. I can't really say yet because you never know until until you actually. It's been we've been working on it for a while um, with another guy, and um, so he's he's kind of said you know. I don't have the construction aspect of it, so I need someone to kind of help me on that part. So it's pretty cool when he said that. I was like, hey, I'm in. So that starts hopefully in December, and that's going to be an exciting project. It's uh, it's it's on the coastline. It's sand, and it's, uh, it's an amazing project. And it was funny because at the beginning, he was very nervous about on a few of the holes that there was a lot of uh, dirt moving. And... And, and moving as sand and everything because it needed to be kind of shaped and you know he was nervous about that and I said no I, that's that's easy for me I'm more nervous about these natural holes over here because I don't want to mess these up you know so so it was kind of I'm more nervous on the holes that are just laying there that are perfect than the ones that actually need a lot of work so so that's exciting that that will start and I'll I'll keep you I'll keep you tuned in on that one I just it's the way these projects go you never know when you're gonna get going and if you say something you feel like you almost jinx it sometimes can you tell us the country I mean, give us a little, uh, a little yeah it's in australia so nice yeah. that's awesome well australia is a big place so there's a lot of coastline there yeah. so you haven't given away yeah. and that's definitely overseas that's over a lot of seas yeah, yeah. so it'd be cool to be back there um i, I mean uh, get back to tasmania too and just work with everyone there and, you know it was i guess a big part is when i was over in australia i think i kind of learned like Golf is supposed to be fun and, and how much they enjoy it there. And, and it's just such a laid back vibe of things. So um, that's so cool. Be back there. And it's another one of those projects too, that you build it and it, it's going to help the economy and you're building it for the right reasons. And that's why I said, I'm, I'm going to put my hand on my, I'm totally involved because here's an opportunity just not to build another golf course and build another golf course, but actually build something that's going to make an impact. So pretty excited. So. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. I'm not going to let you go just yet because we got, we're only halfway there, right? So the front nine was all the business stuff. We had, we had to talk about all the stuff that you're into, the projects you're on. The back nine is just a little fun, random golf question. Let's, uh, let's let our hair down a little bit and have some fun yeah. with the back nine. You ready? Yep. Yeah. Do you get to play the courses that you build? I mean, please tell me you've played these places. Uh, yeah, sometimes. I mean, the only place I haven't been back to is Cabot. Um, I haven't even played Cabot. That's only like I haven't even had to Cabot. Um, I think my invitation was lost in the mail for the for the grand opening. So, <laughs> wow. Well, tell Scott that because his invitation for hashtag the oven invitational, which is coming up here in October, is still lost in the mail. Wink, wink. Nudge, nudge. He's the sponsor. Uh huh. Make sure you give him a hard time about that. There are a lot of golf course designers out there. We've talked about that. Is there a network like where everybody stays connected, or are you guys just kind of doing your own thing in your own separate world? No, I think. I mean, the way that like Riley and myself and others, you know, there's like a collaboration of group of guys that like to collaborate. So as much as we can kind of, you know, we all know how we work and we all enjoy it. We have fun building it. So it's kind of like you plug different puzzle pieces into the, into it to kind of create a team. So that's, that's the most rewarding thing that I see. Like, you know, with winter park, when that first started up, I was like, you know, I, I'm not just putting my name out there. You know, I gave Riley a call up. I'm like, Hey, let's, you want to team up, you want to help out, you want to do this. And and that's what's fun. And then we, we brought in Blake Kona and he's a shaper that works for dope quite a bit too. And he helped us out on the bunkers and was just a fun guy that was just a blast to, to work with. And so we, we look, we like to kind of just, you know, bring like-minded people with us and work together. And, and then it, it shows in the work when, when everyone's having fun, we build some cool golf. So that's awesome. So a lot of golf movies. What's your favorite? Don't say The Legend of Bagger Vance, please. 
I would say probably Happy Gilmore. I got to. Oh, thank you. How good is that movie? That's definitely my top two. Yeah, it can't get too serious, you know. So now this is a really hot topic right now, and one that I've got a pretty uh, unfavorable opinion on. But what do you think? Should tour players be allowed to wear shorts? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Oh, you're no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a popular. Nobody agrees with me at all. They let the caddies do it, so why not? <laughs> I I still think the cat. I mean, that's why I like Augusta so much. The caddies are all in bibs, and I, we have caddies here at Tiburon, and they're they're in bibs head to toe. I mean, I don't know. the The day that I see tour players on a Sunday in shorts, I might be done with PGA Tour golf. I'll just have to. At the same point, I mean, do we need to kind of? take a step back and kind of get a little bit more laid back or not? Or do we need to stay serious and have it like, this is traditional, this is the way it is, or do we kind of like open it up to the new people coming into golf and kind of get a little bit more laid back? I don't know. I don't know. I don't, it's, it's sometimes hard to say, but. I'm a fan of keeping it as traditional and as historic as possible. I'm not even a PGA professional. I'm a part of the CMAA program and I still wear, my shirt's always tucked in. I've always got a collared shirt, and I always button to the top, and I wear pants on the golf course. And that's why my legs are as white as you can imagine, but that's okay because I got pants on when I'm playing golf. Well, at Winter Park, you know, you probably see me, you know, sporting Link Soul out there, T-shirt, playing, with, you know, in shorts and enjoying it and just laid-back golf. You know, but there's places for that, you know. And, yeah. You know, there's places for laid-back golf, and then you got to, you know, be respectful and, and respect the clubs. and. So, I don't know. Okay, I'll allow it. Yeah. Now, you're also a photographer. What kind of a camera do you use? Uh, Canon uh, Mark V uh, or Mark uh, D. I I can't even remember anymore. I, I have <laughs> honestly uh, Mark Mark Three D5 or something like that. I've, I've, uh, I've, I've fallen out of taking photos lately. I've, I've just, I got to get back to it. I got to get a new camera. Um, I've been missing it, so I need to get back into into taking some more more photos. But yeah, well, your motivation to get to get out there and take some pictures. So it's 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 time to to upgrade to something new. What's the best course you've ever played, and the worst course you've ever played? Ooh, best course. Best. Not Cabot Cliffs. <laughs> yeah, not Cabot Cliffs. Yeah, um, you know. I really liked playing Cabot Lynx um, when I was out there. Um, that was kind of when I kind of got – I was never really – like I said, when I first got into this industry, I wasn't a golfer, so it wasn't what led me to that. But, you know, when we would get off and the days were long out there in Cabot, we'd still have some daylight, so we'd go hit like three or four holes and playing with Riley and Trevor. And I just kind of fell in love with – back in love with the game and want to play more and um, – so yeah, that's I would say Cabot, yeah, Cabot Links, because I I just think what Rod did there was amazing. What the what the site was before and what they brought, and, you know, and it led to us coming and building the second golf course. So that's uh, oh man. And the next next question, <laughs> it's that yeah. yeah. I, I can I not answer that one or yeah. You I mean you can pass. I mean. <laughs> that's weird. Well, I mean I guess it's, I'll just say it's, you know, some of the courses, I'll just say a type of course where I guess the course there is just so dictated by real estate that it's like a, you know, condo Canyon type thing. And you, you know, you kind of, you're, it's, it's too, too locked in. You can still have those if they give enough corridor for the golf, but when it's too tight, I guess that's where it gets for me is, is a little bit. And, and just, you know, giving people the opportunity to still walk if they want to walk too. So okay, that's I think that. Yeah. Well, so, when you come to play Tiburon, I'll treat, but I'll drive because we require carts at Tiburon. So, <laughs> like I said, it's it's not. I you know I don't want to say like I'm hard line on it, but you know that's just I guess you try not to get too, you know, tunnel vision on getting on one side of golf when you're building it, but. Well, and you mentioned homes, too. We only have nine housing communities within the gates of Tiburon, too. So there's some houses on the golf course. So 
basically, I'm just going to have to, you know, force you to play when you come down to Naples. <laughs> you might have to edit that one out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Scott's the, he's got the editing power. I don't even know how to edit. I just basically send it to him and he does all the work. I'm just here to ask the questions. What is your favorite PGA Tour major? Oh, man. Feel free to say whatever one Tiger wins next. That's fine. Gosh. <laughs> I don't even know. The Masters is good, right? Because it's the Masters. and But I, I mean... I mean, I do. I, you know, it's one I do look forward to. And then with Ben winning it twice, you know, there's part of it that it was one of the coolest things was like, I think it was the last year that Ben played. We were working at Old Town and I think he played the par three course and he left. And then he did a buy, visit at Old Town. So it was like him sitting there and then him pointing at the TV and like explaining like how the greens would break one way. So it was like him actually talking to us and it was just cool kind of seeing him like he knows like every green by the back of his hand, you know, he just, it, it just seen him get it so excited about that. So I, I would say the masters. I mean, I, I still want to get out there at Augusta and see that and, and check the course out. And, but yeah, that's the one I look forward to when I, I got, you know, loaded up on the phone each year you, you get the, <laughs> you, you upload the app. On yeah. The you got to have the masters app. app. I was like, just sit in the background for the longest time like oh well here we go that's awesome now speaking of majors be careful how you answer this because i'm his biggest fan do you think why or why not uh do you oh he broke up there for a second but yeah you said what was the question again that do you think tiger breaks jack's record why or why not i i would if 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 you would have asked me this question like like three months ago, I probably would say no. <laughs> but after this week, uh, it's looking pretty promising. It, you know what? Yes, yeah, four to tie it and five to beat it. Can't tie it. Tie it. Don't if you're gonna tie it, don't win anymore. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think I, I I think I think he's got his mental game. I think I think basically I think he's done some soul searching. I think he's got the mental thing going it looks like he's enjoying it and it's fun for him again like it was before so it's so hard for me to see that too because you know when he when Kepka walks off and he's off the 18th hole when he wins you know wins the PGA and Tiger's standing there smiling and giving him a high five and hugs and stuff and I'm like that's not Tiger what do you do with but yeah, I mean that's I guess that's what gets gets for me when, when you know I mean everyone has challenges and things like that but like when you see someone like that in such a high profile you know still going forward and coming back from all the stuff that you know most people that would get in their head they never want to be back on a golf course so it's it's pretty cool to see him come back and you know it's getting people excited but it's it, i guess the biggest thing is cool seeing him looking like he's enjoying being out there and it's not like just because he's out there to keep his sponsors or something like that so i think he's there for the right reasons right now so the next three to five years is going to be fun if he stays healthy it's going to yeah. be yeah. It's going to be a wild ride. Yep. And your final question of your hashtag Wednesday match play is what's next? I mean, you're talking about the project that might be coming up in December, but what's next for you and, and your your career? I just, you know, I just want to keep on, you know, the biggest thing, I would like to build, do a few more muni golf courses, you know, and kind of um, get connected, kind of get people seeing the Winter Park model and kind of taking that and kind of using it in other places. And, and I'd like to kind of, in some ways almost start like a little bit of a revolution of in a, a movement of you know people wanting to rehab their municipal golf courses because you know i mean it leads to you know where where's someone going to go start the game of golf like day one are they going to go join a, a private club or do that no they're going to go start in the muni and they're going to get a good you know start to get excited and then they might move up and keep on you know and then they get a membership where they move to a community so i think it's you know really you know, working on getting these municipal golf courses in a place where it's interesting and strategic and fun and, and enjoyable and, and um, you know, accepting. Um, and, and I think we'll grow the game that way. So that's well, just I live on a golf course here in Benita Springs, Florida, and it's not open. And I've been here for two years, and the, the layout's still there. They cut it, not yeah. 
cut to the capacity of the golf course show. But I see these holes, and I'm like, yeah, I hit a three wood there, I hit a wedge there, like. So maybe that could be your first. Come down and down here. We'll yeah. play the run, and I'll drive because you can't yeah. walk. And then you can rebuild Bonita Springs Country Club because I'm yeah. right, right here. I think like sometimes you know like one thing. I mean, even if you got to take an 18 hole course and take it down to nine sometimes or something, you know. But I mean, you just hate to lose this green space in, in a lot of these areas where you know a golf course does have a functional thing that. So it's not all real estate. So. But, but yeah, it's, it'll be it'll be cool to see where you go too. Because like I said, you're young and you've got a pretty good resume thus far. So it'll be fun to see if you get back to Australia and to see the projects you're working on and and knowing that you've got a, a love and passion for house music and dance music. I mean, that just takes it to a whole new level. I don't even know if that might be a new show where we just talk about dance. Yeah. Music and have a totally well, separate channel here. It's what I've uh, you know listened to when I you know when I'm in the doze. A lot of times, either I'm listening to podcasts or different things like that, or or I have, uh, you know, some house music playing in the headphones and, and just shaping away and having fun. And so it's, uh, yeah, it's probably something that most people, when they think, when they see me, probably think I got country music or something like that playing on the dozer. But I love country music. I'm from Indiana, right? So, I mean, I've got to have some country music. But And what's funny, though, you talk about dance music. I go to dance clubs and I listen to these DJs and I travel all over the world to see these guys perform. I don't even dance. Yeah. I just want to feel it and hear it and bob my head a little bit. and. You know about you know. Well, that's that's what I used to do when I used to go to the places too. I, I would find a place where I could actually see the DJ playing, and then just watch him, you know, flip the record, go to the next record, mix in the next thing, and actually seeing it. When most people just think that this one continuum mix, but it's that guy's out there working and, and watching the crowd and seeing how it functions. And you know, this might be a correlation between golf courses and routings and like a DJ set. You know, if you start your DJ set out with some hard track that just like loud and going too fast and, and the BPMs are way up, then everybody's going to walk out. And if you build a golf course with the first hole being the most difficult hole, you're going to lose the people right away. But if you can build something that's neat and, you know, keeps people interested and you can start building, building the, the momentum and the same thing with like the music too, with house music or different things like that, you're watching the crowd, building the music and then at the end you're leaving it with something that people want to listen to more and then with the golf course they want to come and play play more so that might be the first time that maybe that's <laughs> love that we need to tell greg norman that because number two on our black course here at tiburon is the hardest hole maybe in southwest florida so i think i figured it out though i've stopped hitting driver it's like 460 yards but <laughs> i driver and if you, even if you hit it good then you're still blocked to the, based on where the pin is you still can't get there so i'm hitting three wood like five iron whatever it's fine, but I'm hitting more greens, and yeah, know, I figured I, it out. You know, I, I I really I enjoy being on all golf courses, going out and seeing. You know, I'm playing when I get a chance to. So so don't uh, don't think I'm a, a golf course snob by any means. Not at all. <laughs> and I don't mean to say anything about the house here because I mean it. That's you know everybody's got their different taste. I mean you know when people see minimalist courses too. People think they're ugly, awful looking things. And it's just different people's tastes. Um, you know, I still have respect for, you know, manicured golf courses as much as the, you know, the rough, rugged, but you know, everyone's, you know, everyone thinks that, oh man, that course is ugly, you know, but it's actually meant to be that way. Yeah, it's meant to be that way. Some so, of my best rounds and most memorable rounds were on courses that I couldn't remember the name of it. And I'm mad that I had to pay for range balls and it was in terrible shape, but I had a great time when Enjoy yeah. the company of the people that I was with. So that, that's that, what it's all about. That's the biggest thing is if you're having fun with the company that you're with, and, and it should be more about that. Is just if you're around with some friends and having fun and enjoying, that should be a big part of it. And like when I golf, I don't even keep score. I'm not worried about. Oh, it. I can't do that. I got to keep score. I got yeah. numbers in my head. Oh my yeah. god, nothing. Yeah, no score. It just go out, have fun, and just hit around and and then and, and enjoy it. So. Well, hey, thank you so much for coming on the show. This has been great. I know we're way over half an hour because I'm, I'm literally going to go back to the end of the season and just count and see if there are any under 30 minutes. I might need to make this an hour show next season because it's never going to be. It might be an hour tonight. I mean, who knows? We can talk about dance music and golf forever, but hopefully I do get the chance to meet you sometime and play some, play some golf. I'm in Naples down here, so I'm not too super far, but I mean, you're all over the world as far as that's concerned, so I don't even know where I'm going to find you next. But everybody watching at home, make sure you click that subscribe button down below. 
if you l don't want to look at us, which I understand. I mean, I do have a nice shirt on, but sometimes I, uh, you might not want to see this when it's talking. So make sure you subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, in a podcast format. Every Wednesday morning, 10 a.m., this episode is hitting. Make sure you make sure you have the notification set, though, because I'd hate for you to subscribe and then not get the notifications and be like, I didn't get an episode. So that's the important thing. Once you subscribe, click yes on the notifications so you get notified via email every time a new episode drops. Thanks again for coming on the show. It has been great learning more about you and your role with Poor Crenshaw. I think now that Trevor's been on the show, you've been on this show, it's only logical that Corin Crenshaw come on the show next. So I don't know if you got to just you know slip a note, and let them know that I want them to come on, maybe a season finale kind of a thing. I don't know. We'll make it happen sometime, whether it's this season or next. But as always, on the hashtag Wednesday Match Plays, you have to remember to eat, sleep, golf.